Danger Zone. Hello, Hello pleasure, pleasure seekers. Hi, YouTubers. Welcome to Never Had the Pleasure. I've never seen Top Gun, a 1986 Tom Cruise action movie. <laughs> but that's about to change, for better or worse. Before we check it out, we're going to discuss our expectations, and then we'll be back to review and unpack this fighter pilot classic. And if you're looking for just a straight up review, you can use the chapters down below to do so. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> we are doing Top Gun because there is a billboard outside your house currently promoting the much anticipated sequel. Outside my house? Yes, it's new. <laughs> um, it's simply how I chose to phrase <laughs> that a sequel is being released. <laughs> you can travel to the cinemas to see it by road. Or for one lucky contest winner by air. <laughs> They're probably doing something like that. I don't. It know. should be. They used to do things like that in the 2000s. It was an eye-catching ad. Leonard sent Pepsi 15 labels and a check, and waited for his jet. Pepsi's response: Someone who's taking advantage of the legal system doesn't really typify the Pepsi generation. I think they're just happy to have this movie coming out. <laughs> Having never seen the first Top Gun, I'm definitely just like excited for like a big budget blockbuster spectacle. I heard that all the actors were trained in just how to fly fighter jets, <laughs> which I hope will be used for thrilling film sequences. And like, maybe that was happening with this movie as well. I, I don't know this movie to have like bad effects or anything. No, I think like given when it was made, everything would have to be pretty practical to be even remotely believable. If they were bad, then people wouldn't like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I will say that I think this movie's current reputation is a little more about just being like a good vibey hangout movie mm. more than like a really top tier high caliber action movie where the creativity of the action sequences is more core to what people continue to like about it. You know, I expect that everything's going to hold up pretty well because like Tony Scott has I think a pretty discerning attention to detail for what will be real. And he turned to me once with tears in his eyes, getting the shot, the smoke kind of curls. And this was, you know, he hit uh, Nirvana for him. And, and I guess we'll just find out if maybe they're just like completely dramatically inert <laughs> and they're to sell the movie, which is mostly just like boys being boys. <laughs> Either way, we'll be talking about it. Uh, uh yeah, uh, we be talking. Top Gun. I've never seen it before. You you have seen it like a long time ago, right? Yeah, like a decade plus. This is a movie that I know a lot of people think is a lot of fun. Top like, Gun, big fun. <laughs> go Great. For the fun. Go for the fun. <laughs> Bonfo Bio. <laughs> Which sounds great to me. I love fun movies. <laughs> Especially if there are homoerotic <laughs> things to make fun of. Which this movie is infamous for. So. To make fun of and, and also lovingly embrace. <laughs> like we were talking about in Risky Business, uh, where the cultural memory is so tied to the scene of Tom Cruise dancing in his underwear. Hmm. Um, I think like this movie's cultural memory is similarly tied to these like greased up like men in towels getting up in each other's face in the locker room and then having a prolonged slow motion shirtless volleyball game. Mm. <laughs> but the thing is, is like I can't see it really being much more than that. I have a feeling people are like ov over exaggerating the homoerotic content. I think the movie is going to almost entirely be about the <laughs> relationships and conflicts between like a cast of almost men. all. Yeah. Where that's just like going to be in the mix. And I, I think again, like who knows how much the kind of like cultural focus on that is occluding the like action movie part of this. This is a Tony Scott directed movie and like he knows how to shoot action. So there have to be like really exciting, beautifully shot action sequences with these fighter jets. Yeah, I mean like this is a movie that like straight men like sure. like pretty earnestly. So I take it that the action sequences are gonna probably impress to some extent and that the movie will meet some bar 
of like emotional resonance <laughs> in like discussing male relationships. There is a case to be made that people are kind of being dismissive of how like homosocial behavior is completely natural. Men should be able to express affection towards one another. <laughs> yeah. Regardless and... of your orientation. Where the fun in that kind of comes up is when that like does not appear to be intended. <laughs> when I needed your ass, you were nowhere to be found. Heard a lot about this volleyball sequence. And it was one of like two pretty iconic sequences from this movie that are very exactingly recreated in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episodes. You're gonna love this stuff. Whoa, whoa, what are you showing me here? A testosterone driven action melodrama. Yeah. Do you have any idea what the other sequence might be? The I, kind of like mm. other like visually iconic sequence from this? I mean, I'm just thinking of the like tarmac of the aircraft carrier radiating heat and mm. like planes taking off. Tom Cruise is like walking towards you with like a different kind of Ray-Ban. Exactly. Um, this hey. is our, yeah, this is our Tom Cruise Ray-Ban series. <laughs> <laughs> Part two. Uh, all right, well then that other very tender and erotic love sequence will just be a pleasant surprise for you. I mean, I know there's at some point where they're like, Oh no, this one involves speed. a woman. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it involves a woman. Oh. And the song that propelled this soundtrack to new the, heights <laughs> to one of the uh i think like highest selling soundtracks in history yeah. everyone who's seen it and knows the song probably like has it in their head right now <laughs> okay we will be watching them <laughs> and that we will so top gun <laughs> yeah what's that about <laughs> the top meaning the best Gun. I guess they're fighter planes, mm. fighter jets. Yeah. So they're, who are they fighting? Are they, do they like go up against like a villain? Well, it wouldn't be much of a fight because they are the top guns. Uh huh. So any villain would be inherently less. Well, I don't think, I don't yes. know this movie to be <laughs> bloody. And these like, are a fighter plane, mm. fighter jets yeah, that um, could just pew with impunity <laughs> this is like the fun of being a fighter <laughs> jet pilot <laughs> i don't know if we're gonna get into like actual combat i have doubts my recollection is that it's much more about like inter-pilot feuds yeah than about like, like fighting the ruskies or something it's about feuds and fun both in the sun right. and in the saddle <laughs> which is what maybe they call the, uh, the seat the of their plane uh, the cockpit. I don't think of this movie as something that is earnestly grappling with like our military <laughs> industrial complex. No. But it, it is just kind of like surface level funny that this is quite a peachy look at it. I guess like there is room here for a natural threat just by the nature of flying fighter pilot. <laughs> flying uh, Game just from like the natural threat that is present from like flying fighter jets. Yeah, there's there's like an inherent risk. Yeah, this is dangerous. <laughs> that it is. They love danger. Even for a Top Gun, it invades the the fun and the sun a little okay. bit. But I, I remember kind of like as much grappling with growing up and maturing and being responsible. They're yeah, men, probably. But they're children. <laughs> they're warriors and we should all normalize that <laughs> i mean this definitely comes from a time when there was like no self-consciousness about being this like very nationalist like jingoistic neutral to positive unnuanced take on serving in the military this movie has like the exact relationship to being a real fighter pilot as baywatch does to being a real mm. lifeguard <laughs> I can already see you swinging on those trees. Exactly. In like every Star Wars movie, at some point, like they're the underdogs and they all have to like rally together to like use their star ships. Which were of course meant to fly. <laughs> but like they have a mission, they need to like penetrate the Death Star and blow it up. Oops. But like I don't think this movie ends with like everybody banding together and like flying off to like bomb Russia or something. <laughs> Which I guess makes sense. Like it was made in the year that like sadly for recent American history is at the longest point from being in an active war. It is yeah. kind of like a bubble. It's like a pleasant mm -hmm. vacuum. Michael, do you have any thoughts on fighter jets? 
Oh, no. just like a, I guess they're cool with like the caveat of like the give peace a try. But uh, they're cool machines. Sure beats the bus. We were watching The Simpsons the other day and he said, I love an air show. I do, I love an air show. The episode was not super pro air show. I understand that when I go to one, because I'm visiting from Canada, mostly in the States, like as an outsider who doesn't have to live full time in a culture that like really ravenously praises and elevates these tools of, of death. Who doesn't need a daily dose of that? And just like as physical objects, they look cool and they have cool angles and they can go real fast. They're very loud. This is a movie from, I guess, just like a few years after Risky Business, which yeah. we just reviewed. We were both pretty positive on Cruise there. Yeah. If you haven't seen that episode, he looks incredibly boyish. And for this to mm -hmm. come out only three years later, when he is like very much like a grown up action star, that's like a pretty quick turnaround. This is kind of a star making turn for him in a different way than Risky Business, where it's the first instance of him being like an action star. I think of him to some degree still as like the action movie Mickey Mouse, where mm -hmm. he's just like a solid performer, does what he does in these action movies. It's never anything like too interesting, but he's just like very charismatic and like nice to look at. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to put it because he's not a standout at least when this movie was made, I think, at, at any one thing. But he, like, all of his sort of, like, core competencies mm. are in place, and he always understands the assignment. Michael, do you know uh, anyone else that's in this movie? Kelly McGillivray. <laughs> Gillis. <Like> Gillis Mountain? <laughs> Kelly McGillis. I mean, whatever. Like, honestly, she's pretty immaterial. Person that uh, I That's not fair. Let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure she's good. Yeah, but I hope she has something to do. <laughs> but not too good to replace. Yeah, no, the person I was hoping that you might know is in this. Mm. Is one Glenn Close? <laughs> no, Val oh. Kilmer. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, he's like the rival. Tom he's the Gunn, other star. Tom Cruise. Kelly McGillis. This is probably a high point for like both of their careers. For sure. The reason I bring Val up. Valentine Kilmer. Uh, yeah. Is that his name? I don't know, but that's that's a good name. It is, it is a good name. <laughs> Anyways, I really just wanted to bring Val Kilmer up because uh, Val Kilmer infamously believes that if you have acted as something in a movie, that carries over one for one into your real life. Mm -hmm. And so if you portray like a firefighter in a movie, you could be as good or a better firefighter than real firefighters because you've come closer to the psyche. Presumably, he is among the world's foremost fighter pilots. <laughs> he still got it. We both really appreciate the like Zucker Brothers uh, parody <laughs> flicks. I think what like would spoof you call them? is yeah, more. Spoof, yeah, spoof movies. Like Airplane, he's in one of them, Top Secret, which uh, he's like very charming in. Thank you. Um, Hillary. Hillary. That's an unusual name. And that's kind of like the only thing that I've seen recently with him in it. So it should be exciting to see him here. I think like we've kind of covered the bases with the boys and their toys. And their toy boys. <laughs> should we uh, hit the volleyball court and spike some opinions? <laughs> the faces I make. Let's uh, do it. Sean. Oh no, I caught it. <laughs> the one thing you, you can't do. <laughs> Such a clean exit from the pre. Let's go watch. <laughs> yeah, let's get down the Let's get down. <laughs> hey, mother, this is X ray Tango. Relax, him, uh, Have one on me. Roger, dead mother. Trouble with your refreshment system? Uh, negative. This giant Pepsi commercial it doesn't really typify the Pepsi generation. We're recording audio, right? Oh, oh yeah. That means we're ready to go. All signs are clear for <laughs> Lift off. <laughs> we're living in a fundamentally post-Top Gun world, would you say? You and I? <laughs> uh, sure. This one was like pretty straight down the middle for me. It's not like the Top Gun of fun. I think it like fulfilled its mission. I don't know that we were ever going to get some like grand 
final artistic statement on being a fighter pilot. This was probably a, like close to about as good as it was going to be. What I was most interested here watching it was just like the day to day life of these like mm. fighter pilot trainees and what their family lives are like. It's definitely a theme here. Half of the movie is saddled with this romance. It definitely has like a pretty <laughs> major case of the not gays. Case of the not gays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get to it all, but the like homoerotic subtext here is what is interesting. There is a reason why it's a big part of what people talk about. So foundational to the script and to a degree the relationships this movie had a very like chunky kind of like herky-jerky structure there's like homoerotic like buddies go into the bar section and then it like veers sharply into billowy curtain blue filter love section mm. and then it jerks back to like grief section then it jerks to like resolving daddy issues at so we the did end. do it yeah, did it right. It's interested in Cruz's relationship with uh, Charlie, Char girl Charlie. So nice it's a Maverick's girl, relationship with Charlie. <laughs> and then in, when, uh, spoiler alert, Hold up of course, mm. uh, when Goose gets cooked, <sighs> and we were shook, the movie kind of like can't keep more than one thing in perspective, right? Like the romance, and then Goose morning, then we loop back to the daddy stuff. It's not really like throughout yeah and the daddy stuff felt so peripheral mm -hmm. that i think they really should have just dropped it the movie would have benefited from either a little bit of a trim or uh it could have done with like another just like one more scene each with goose and ice i thought i was good on the goose I like okay. the goose. Nothing against goose. I think he's just so clearly the best actor <laughs> and he's not given much to do, but when he is given something to do, it's just like, oh, this guy's very clearly just in another league. And the daddy stuff, it's like not material to the rest of the theme. Yeah. Uh, and to the point where like uh, the resolution at the end when he's talking to Viper, I try to look up on like Wikipedia, like what it is, like what he tells him about his dad. And it's just like, he said he was a, f a hero. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't really go into more detail. Yeah, your old man did it right. His F4 was hit, he was wounded, but he could have made it back. He stayed in it. For that kind of mentor relationship could have used a little more depth. And there are other things that they could have talked about more tied to what the movie spends its time on. Like he goes to his house and he sees that he has like a wife and kids. And yeah. they could have talked about like how it's hard to balance that, but you need to find time for both. Like they could have talked a little bit more about like Goose and what it's like to lose somebody that you work so closely with. On a similar point at the end when he's throwing away the dog tags, I'm kind of awful at paying attention to some of these like blatant details in films, mm. but like I didn't know if this was like Goose's dog tags oh, or yeah, his dad's. I I didn't either. And like I figured it was his dad's because yeah. wouldn't you give the dog tags to Goose's widow? Yeah, presumably you'd give them to Meg. And she could store them in her hair. Wikipedia also confirms that it was Goose's dog tags oh, that really? he just callously threw out. I mean, the ocean. <laughs> some of the stuff that the movie like kind of has both ways and like ooh, splish splash. Like, is it about like daddy issues or not? Like, does he bear some kind of guilt or not? That stuff could wind up kind of accidentally paying off like 40 years after the fact because this new one is obviously going to be about daddy issues and guilt if it includes goose's son as it is as a movie yeah the, there's some stuff in there that's not super well like <laughs> followed through on Mm. You're saying you could use like more Iceman, and yeah, I was kind of surprised uh, that Val isn't like in this all that much. Maybe I just like didn't pick up on like which helmet he was under. I liked how they had their names on the helmet. Yeah, that was very helpful. But even then, <laughs> <laughs> there's a little dip in like how much action we get in the middle of this movie. It took a while to like actually see him in action. Is this maybe a good place to talk about the flying scenes a bit? No. Yes. 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 And, and I don't know if I could even like distinguish between the aircraft so much. That's a challenge when you're like shooting from the ground or from another mm. plane. With the ending, like the big climactic action scene, mm. uh, they did what they could to differentiate 
by giving the MIG pilots much darker yeah. coloring and making yeah. them look very overtly villainous. <laughs> so. When, like, really, if the frigate that they're rescuing or whatever has drifted into hostile waters, mm. they are invading to get it back. But yeah, you're right. Like, the <laughs> coloring of the planes there was welcomed. The obvious thing to do is to intercut that with the, like, close-up shots in mm. the cockpits, I guess. Um don't know and the other kind of turn i think so (laughs) hey gainer cutting that with maverick and goose and and jester um that obviously helps gotta say cruz great eyebrows for this movie oh yeah thick almost (laughs) unibrow-esque yeah they were they were verging on uni uni territory is that in the article no i don't think it i don't don't remember it talking about yogi's (laughs) eyebrows uh that much yogi yeah Maverick is better. Hmm. Oh, that was a question I had. What would your nickname be? I was going to ask you the co-name. same question, but I didn't come no. up with one myself. <laughs> um, yes, because when the credits rolled, I was like, wouldn't it have been fun if like everybody in the crew got to pick their call sign? Like a treehouse of horror. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, okay, uh, I'll give you mine. Because mm. I've thought about this. I think mine would be Chef. <laughs> I grew up with all these like guys in the neighborhood, and so like we would always be playing street hockey or with like super soakers i was always the one who was like i'm gonna be the chef i'm gonna sit down and talk and talk to the mm. girls in the neighborhood i would be pepsi popper because <laughs> i'm sweet but clumsy pepsi popper <laughs> yeah and it'll just be an excuse to put up some pictures for when this was made and like the tech of the time like this is I and mean, obviously they have like pretty unprecedented access to these kinds of aircraft. And then on top of that, I thought the footage of a training um, uh, was <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> I wasn't sure where he was going to go on that one. <laughs> and he went to fascinating. <laughs> it's dynamic and it's, yeah. it's exciting. And if you've ever tried to get video of a fighter as it's going by or taking off, like it, it is not easy, but it's hard to convey that on film Mm. without something to measure that against you can't always have that when you're like fighting over the ocean and it's just like sky or water there were a couple like really cool shots where you do get this almost abstract idea of how fast they are moving there are shots where they are over the like whatever mountain range in California they're training near, they go by so fast and the shot moves so fast that you know how like with a miniature they have to like slow, they have to like way crank down the camera. I'm generally shooting at 120 frames a second because I need it to be slowed down in post. What looks like this at first will look like this when it's slowed down in post so that the fog and other elements in the scene are moving at a speed that looks natural. It looks like it's a miniature that they're flying by and it's just like these real planes moving very fast. There's another shot where they're moving so fast and so freely that they look like wasps at a picnic table, (laughs) which is really just like quite crazy when you remember that like this is a mountain. (laughs) That's a big part of like what I'm excited for with this sequel. There's so much more that they can do to really convey like how crazy these action scenes are. The movie overall looked fantastic. Oh yeah. Um, Tony Scott was pretty insistent on like almost always shooting at sunrise or sunset. It, yeah, it, it it did have a lot of just like beautiful golden hour yeah. shots, lots of like backlit like heat radiating yeah 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 (laughs) that was all also like the crews going about their day it wasn't like a film set that i think paid off big time Mm. that like it did have that sense of reality and it's interesting they went with tony scott for something like this in hindsight it's a no-brainer right Um, because he would go on to direct a lot of these kinds of movies. Mm. But at the time, the only other movie that he had done is The Hunger, Mm. which is just, like, really not this kind of movie. I read that they chose him because he had done a commercial with fighter jets, and they were impressed. We kind of talked in the pre a little bit about how this movie was made, like, 
equidistant from like actual mm. engagement in the military. I kind of speculated how much an enemy isn't present in this movie. Yeah, like they really had to make something up out of whole cloth. <laughs> we have like these enemies at like the beginning, right? They're in combat and then mm. at the end. Yeah, and it is it is kind of crazy because you have to imagine that what happens at the end mm. would at the very least make like a major international incident blowing up MiGs within Soviet territory. How does it feel to be on the front page of every newspaper in the English-speaking world? Even though the other side denies the incident, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Definitely seems like that's more of a concern now, although I noticed, like, in my own, like, cursory Wikipedia mm. being, uh, this movie did, like, really well internationally at kind of, like, the peak of blue jean diplomacy. The world was just, like, pretty psyched for this... A very, very, very American product. Part of that is because this was made at like a time in which there wasn't an imminent threat. They could go and like appreciate like this American, very beautiful propaganda. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which like this is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. And I don't. I don't think it's. It's. It's not even really trying to hide that. Yeah. This is a real like popcorn take on the war movie. Yeah, I think it's it's a lot easier Where to like, it's like something it's like It's best this. if you just don't think about <laughs> that. Yeah, and like that it is all just like a glorified training exercise makes it a lot easier uh, yeah, to like let the morality of things kind of slip by. I, I noticed a couple times just how expensive all this ultimately <laughs> not maybe super necessary training Mm -hmm. is the top gun program represents the height of cold war mm -hmm. budget excess where they were training to an incredibly exacting standard generation after generation of these like very high turnover pilots mm -hmm. who just like as it turns out one were never <laughs> required um for, for the, like, 25 years that they were training them. Mm. And two, were just, like, drastically overtrained compared to the, the Soviet opposition that they would have faced. I was chuckling to myself, too. They're constantly concerned about, like, who's the best? Who's number one? The competition <laughs> is there for a reason. But it's not, like, a zero-sum game. And because it's all a training exercise, the big victory it's is like getting <laughs> to come back as an instructor. You don't get, like, your own squadron command or something. You just get to come back and teach. Yeah, you think that he would be, like, stationed somewhere ready to... But there's yeah, nowhere to be, there's nowhere to be stationed. <laughs> like that's all just busy it all, work. It's all the same <laughs> problem. I'll ask you, being the one who read uh, the article that this movie is how homoerotic was it? Well, <laughs> we was, can dig into that. <laughs> away from that subject. <laughs> well, we'll get back to it. I mean, did the, did the article cover <laughs> that? Uh, allow me to read, if I may. I don't know. <laughs> The small, noisy room is packed with pumped-up fighter jocks. There is a lively trade at the bar, mostly in light beer, but out of this crowd of 50 or so men, no more than three are looking at the nearly nude dancers, with raw sex waving right in front of their eyes. These supremely healthy young males are standing around in twos and threes and talking about the hop. It seems like from the article that navigating that, like, very fuzzy area between like homosocial and homoerotic behavior is was like gonna be pretty unavoidable the screenplay here doesn't avoid that. no <laughs> you know, hard on by the end of vietnam don't tease me whose butt did you kiss to get in here huh? well the list is long but distinguished yeah, well so's my johnson my dick is long <laughs> and decorated <laughs> it's really hard to know like in the 80s when this was being like written and shopped around how much of this was just like truly unintended but I think there, there's like so much that it seems like it's at least partly intended and textual. I don't understand how else you would shoot the volleyball scene like they did. This was made at a time when relationships between men, so just like male dynamics, were like so protected and insulated. You could have this kind of dialogue and those mm. kinds of shots and to question it. <laughs> You'd have to come from outside <laughs> like who, that culture. Who was doing to, that? Yeah. And like who had like the platform to like pick that apart. Things like the Source article have very privileged access to a very closed off culture. Like it describes 
the the sort of camaraderie between the Top Gun candidate pilots as being like the center ring in a bullseye. So there are all these like separations that isolate this one really very small group of people just spending like all of their time together. Is it reasonable that they just like would never ever touch each other or like talk about their bodies? Probably not, but the movie definitely like leans into that side. The people who made this movie felt free to like showcase their like bodies as like Twitter wasn't around to make jokes about that. These people are at the top of society. <laughs> as our mom says, mm. you got it, flaunt it. I believe it's if you if you got it, you got it. <laughs> They're both certainly true. Well, like, let's talk some more about the homoeroses. <laughs> On top of the script, what the filmmakers are imagining the like Maverick Iceman rivalry to play out as can instantly tell that they're very special. <laughs> Avell's introduced with some like very intimidating pen twirling. It all reeks of cheesy 70s porn scenes. <laughs> there were there were entire scenes that just like one for one no changes mm -hmm. could have been the like setup for scenes in a in a game porn. Even like all of the scenes when they're like I don't like you because you're dangerous. That's right. Nice. Man, I am dangerous. Let alone the scene where... Still awake? What's up? Can't sleep. I gotta be straight with you, Mav. I got a family to think about. I know it's tough for you. You're the only family I've got. I just can't get to sleep. One of the like big old gay porn studios has a YouTube channel that just like remove all the adult content. Uh, like a couple of them have entered like a very rarefied meme tier. Mm -hmm. Presumably there were like a lot of gay porn movies like made about fighter pilots <laughs> after Top Gun. Yeah, like in terms of dialogue, I don't really know how different they would be. Here we go. That is $20. $20. You have to have carnal knowledge of a lady this time <laughs> on the premises. Hi there, beautiful. How you doing now? Read my lips. Fuck them off. Come on, baby. You know you're here. Oh, I love a girl's spunk. Yeah, you like that? Take this. <laughs> oh, man. Fun job. Come down, buddy. You always grab, 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 you know? I really want to make it with her, though. Well, you need to know a woman's erogenous zone. I mean, once you've established body contact, you never take both hands off. I know that there is a, like, straight porn parody hmm. of Top Gun, which is just, like, really kind of galling. <laughs> There's only one woman in this entire movie. Hey! At the same time, I can understand uh, how that would come about because this is a very inappropriate relationship. <laughs> no wonder people got it in their heads men and women couldn't like be in the military <laughs> together. She's constantly like all talk about how like it's not, it takes more than some fancy flying to get with me. But, like, and then does it? just like immediately hands <laughs> him her number. To me, that was part of just like a broader spirit of the movie. Life moves fast in this world. Everything happens very fast. Rivalries, forging really close bonds with people, the resolution of daddy issues. There is a little bit of almost like a summer camp yeah, energy because like it's it's a very condensed training period. Mm. So I mean, I guess like if you're gonna have an affair with your instructor, it has to happen pretty quick. An easy way to fix that would be like uh, Maverick making a connection with someone outside of like Fighter Town. Just like make her a journalist mm. who's like researching. Sure, you, she's like on <laughs> she's like on assignment. Yeah, um, and I guess that's still like a Is little that bit always uh, second best uh, not. Not totally kosher to more direct, uh, aren't you? Like as a journalist to be like sleeping with your interview subject, but cool. it's like... <laughs> another thing I thought was interesting is he keeps like invading her personal space. Tom Cruise, he's necessary for that kind of role. Maverick is very lucky that he looks like and is as charming as Tom Cruise, because otherwise he's just like constantly 
way up in people's faces, making way too much eye contact. <laughs> when he walks into the washroom, she just immediately is like, so so what are you thinking? You think we're going to have sex here on the <laughs> counter? <laughs> only in a script written by men would he be able to get away with it. And only someone like Tom Cruise could get away with it on screen. And even just like getting up in her face, like when they're just talking, a very close talker. And so is Ice, by the way. The two of them are constantly showing off their chompers, too. Mm. Got great chompers. And he's perfect for playing this hyper focused, determined guy, because that's what Tom Cruise is. I mean, there's like stories <laughs> dating back to him filming The Outsiders and pretty mercilessly. Uh, focused on his craft that kind of stood out to me more so because like they're fine they're like very good looking photogenic people who are we talking about here uh kelly and tom their connection was only really that like tom was relentless <laughs> That's i would maybe I like even go further and say that like their connection is a purely manufactured reality of the script i have in my notes like well she fell. Like, there are melodramas and like, sex comedies of the 50s mm. where they fall in love so suddenly at the end that it has almost like an eerie quality. These people have been like maneuvered against their will into love. Like, this definitely like uh, was like tiptoeing up to that line. Yeah. Right? Is this even plausible? Because, yeah, like when the movie is looking at its watch and like, well, it's time to jerk back to the fighter pilot stuff. Mm. Like, they're in love now and. That's where we need to leave this for the next part to happen. So that's how things are. Kate's dead. Take me to bed and lose me forever. That sex scene. Boy, did they want us to know exactly what, where their <laughs> tongues where, were. Yeah, like, it's a very tongue forward doing. sex scene. Yes. <laughs> very tongue forward. Uh, Tom Cruise in the 80s obviously favored a very billowy curtained uh sexual encounter back when he used to have sex in movies <laughs> back when movies used to ever have sex scenes speaking of taking my breath away <laughs> one thing i think we've got to talk about mm. is the soundtrack playing with the boys yeah perfect selection for the volleyball sequence <laughs> <laughs> playing with the boys yeah, these are the boys of summer i gotta add that to my life <laughs> <laughs> I guess like this is where Highway to the Danger Zone came from, mm. and same with Take My Breath Away. Uh, this all like makes more sense as to why like Lady Gaga is on the new one. <laughs> Sorry, on or in? In the soundtrack. They really love reusing the songs here. Sure, yeah. Well, and they're a good way to tell like which chunk of the movie you're in. Because mm. if you're in like the Danger Zone section, then it's just constantly on the soundtrack. In the like Take My Breath Away section, like, it is just constant. <laughs> okay. I wonder if they'll do the, like, <laughs> recycling of her track. The one major way that uh, Top Gun breaks from just being, like, a popcorn fantasy is with the death of Goose. It's really, like, the only thing that's given any real gravity. That definitely seems informed by the article, which talks a fair bit about how death is just, like, very abstract and unreal. In this business, you hate to lose, Yogi says, and getting shot is synonymous with losing. Getting your parachute and dying and all that sort of thing. <laughs> Like, it's just obviously... Like it's a video game or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, like, it's just obviously not something that's been made real, <laughs> which is definitely how the movie handles it, too, that, like, the stakes are high, but completely theoretical until they very <laughs> suddenly right aren't. Bingo, Maverick's dead. You're out of there, kid. Defense Department regrets to inform you that your sons are dead because they were stupid. You do have to have some stakes here. If this was like a fun romp, like summertime romp, this might as well just be like a comedy. So I like I get why you need uh something like Goose's death here. And I think it's important to include, like, this is very dangerous. One of the people who filmed the movie died. The article talks about this very specific problem that the f-14 suffer kind of eerie that there is this like through line from the article that through... like makes it into <laughs> the script yeah and, and, and also plays out in real life shooting the movie yeah yeah it's just kind of eerie to see it go from like reality as 
as presented by the article into like the fiction of the movie, like back into reality mm. with the death of this pilot that definitely uh, a downer. It's good that like, you know, that's not happening on the new Top Gun or the new like Mission Impossibles. Whether it's because of what happened on this movie or not, like it, that seems like something Tom Cruise takes pretty seriously. The other thing from the source article that um, kind of made its way into the movie in a way that I didn't totally expect is the kind of like reality denial <laughs> that these pilots have when somebody does die. Mm. Um, I didn't pull it out uh, of the article, but, and so like maybe we'll, we'll toss it up there. It, it definitely talks like at a fair bit of length about how, like when a pilot does die, when there is an accident, how quickly that person just like gets written out of memory in order to kind of like keep fueling this ultra competitive, like macho high performance uh, reality that they're living. That comes into the movie a little bit more than I expected. Viper mm. uh, like coming into the bathroom and like telling Tom Cruise like right after this, <laughs> this accident. Most of them die as you die too, but there will be others. You gotta let him go. This is like later that day. <laughs> is it like when he's coming back from that, from like uh, Goose's passing that like, get him out of line here so. <laughs> Yeah, like don't yeah. let him like get the yips basically. When his family comes to make Ryan, like obviously has like her own relationship with him as well. So like he's definitely more than just like a partner in the sky. <laughs> Even like May Ryan's conversation with him after Goose dies is completely about how like Goose would have wanted you to keep flying. <laughs> like that's it. That's that's basically all she like, says. Yeah, like he'd flown anyway. Without you. He hated it. And it's not even solicited. <laughs> She's like very understanding and in that moment, very considerate of his feelings. <laughs> like you were saying, like these people are so devoted to their training for no reason. <laughs> but you'd, you'd think that, that she would probably have some anger <laughs> as well. Yeah, that's definitely what I was expecting from that scene. The intensity of the eye contact that he's making throughout, just like constantly staring down his rivals or his uh, romantic uh, mm. prey slash predator <laughs> kind of paid off with Meg Ryan where for like the first time he can't make eye contact with her. I thought that was like pretty well played, just like a little thing. What did you think of Tom's, uh, heart of the ocean moment? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to meet Who up. Who wore it better? <laughs> Tom did it first. <laughs> you know, it's um, probably like a call back to like from here to eternity or something and we just haven't seen it just want to say end of the movie we got the roll call with everyone smiling or smirking or oh, yeah. reflexing <laughs> love it you gotta send them out smiling yeah <laughs> go full scream on it exactly <laughs> they don't do it enough full high school musical three <laughs> <laughs> i love that and i love a movie that does like a this character mm. went on to do this zany thing <laughs> goose went on to continue to be dead yeah, there's always one down. Mmm. <laughs> Stand by me while you oh. can. Oh my heart. <laughs> What's your zero target trajectory? <laughs> roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? What's your main takeaway? My takeaway is that this was um, a fine way to spend a couple hours. <laughs> action sequences for the time this was made. Some great shots. Um, ultimately, probably isn't something that's really going to stick with me. The hope in going back to some of these movies is that there's like something that doesn't get talked about enough. Yeah, however much you think you'll like Top Gun, you will probably like it pretty exactly that much. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> like exactly as good as you think it is. Whatever that is for you. <laughs> yeah, there had to have been like a couple dozen fighter pilot movies made in the 80s. And like, there is a reason why this is the only one that mm. is remembered. They got the access and they had the high caliber cast and crew to like make this feel like a little bit more 
than it is. There's a reason why Top Gun has presence in the culture. Mm. Why, like this is the fighter pilot movie that they wanted to make a sequel to 30 plus years later. I think that's all earned. It doesn't really compensate for some weaknesses. Uh, those weaknesses also just like don't really get in the way. A little fun fact. Mm. A Top Gun is basically the first VHS that came out that was in any way affordable to like the average person. Oh. Which is part of why it was such a success on that. Uh, very shrewd. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's good to be back after a good long while. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me take this opportunity to salute you, the viewer. You're the real <laughs> heroes for making it to the end of this. Oh, thank you for watching. I'd like you to know that if you don't like the video, a fighter jet will enter your bedroom <laughs> this evening and you're fired. It's just destroying you. <laughs> Gosh, I will be sure to like the video. Give us a comment with your uh, your call sign. And tell yeah. us exactly why. Yeah. Um, get as personal as you care to. Mm -hmm. And then some. Oh, uh, shake it out. And say uh, goodbye. So many father figures in this movie. He did. He did have a lot of father figures. I just kept waiting for him to fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> <laughs>